Well, hi, everybody. It's John Elzinga, and welcome back to It's a Great Day to Serve the Lord. And today, I want to talk about a God-focused reality, as opposed to our limited vision. A God-focused reality, as opposed to our limited vision. Have you ever felt this way, or said this, or maybe you're feeling this, thinking this right now, about the situation in your life, challenges that are ahead of you? You might think, it's too hard. It's impossible. Can't be done. Won't happen. I, I don't see how this thing's going to work out. It hasn't worked out so far, so why should I expect it to work out in the end? That relationship is doomed. Sarah said, uh, I'm too old. <laughs> you may recall the conversation God has with Abraham in uh, Genesis 18, 13 to 15 regarding Sarah. Um, you know, the, the, the Lord's saying, you know, you're, you're going to get pregnant at an old, old, old age. And uh, so the Lord says to Abraham, why did Sarah laugh and say, will I really have a child now that I am old? And, and, and when we're talking old, we're talking probably in their 90s. God says, is there anything too hard for the Lord? I'll return to you at the appointed time next year, and Sarah will have a son. This is a, this is a hope, this is a dream, this is a promise, actually, that, that Abraham and Sarah had had for years and years and years and years. They had given up hope that this promise was really a promise, that God would come through. Folks, let's face it. I, I think most of us believe in miracles. But we just don't see God working in our situation. And maybe we think, you know, miracles happen to them. Miracles happen to that person, but not to me. Or maybe we've asked for a miracle so often and it hasn't happened that we feel God just doesn't care about our situation or it's just not going to happen for us. Again, that's what Sarah felt, isn't it? They wanted this for so long, and it's just not going to happen. And now at my age, you say it's going to happen? Sarah's laugh was skepticism with a side of doubt and disbelief. There are ways to get more in sync, I think, with God's reality than our reality, God's way than our way, God's perspective than our perspective. And there are things we have to keep in mind in terms of God's terms. First, know that God arranges where and when and how we live, in what territory, in what region, born to what people, at what time. Acts 17, 26 says, from one man he made all nations, that they should inhabit the whole earth. And he marked their appointed times in history and the boundaries of their land. In other words, God determined when you would live, where you would live, with whom you would live, when you would move, uh, where you would go. God determined that. Walk tall, knowing that God placed you where you're at for a reason. <laughs> just as he did for Esther. We remember the story of Esther. And, as, and in, in Esther 4.14, 4, as Mordecai says to Esther, for you to remain silent at this time, relief and deliverance for the Jews will arise from another place, uh, but you and your family will perish. And who knows but that you have come to your royal position for such a time as this. God places us where we need to be, at what time we need to be, in relationship to who we need to be in relationship with, to fulfill his plan and his desire. desire. So, <clears throat> remember, God it placed you where you are, when you are, for a particular reason. Next, we need to remember that God, in, in conjunction with this, God orders our steps. Proverbs 37, 24 says, 
The Lord directs the steps of the godly. He delights in every detail of our lives. Other versions say God orders our steps. God determines what we're going to do, where we're going to go, how we're going to be there. God's laid out a plan. God's made an arrangement. God's plans are always sure. And because of that, remember this, third, you're not alone. That whatever the issue is, whatever the challenge is, whatever the trial, God goes before you. God's ahead of this thing. God's in the advance plan, right? Deuteronomy 31.8 says, The Lord himself goes before you and will be with you. He will never leave you or forsake you. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. And so, my friend, when we understand that God places us where we are, when we are, in relationship to certain people, in relationship to certain situations, when we understand that God orders our steps, makes the plans, makes the arrangements, and when we understand that God goes before us, finally, here's what we do to realize, to live in a God-focused reality. Finally, step into it. Step into it. Watch this. In Joshua 13, 15 to 16, and they're approaching the Jordan River. And as they laid bare the ark where, where they were to come to the Jordan, and the feet of the priests that bear the ark were dipped into the brim of the water. When, when they stepped into it, the minute, the second they stepped into it, the water from upstream stopped flowing. It piled up a great distance away in a town called Adam in the vicinity of Zerathan, while the water flowing down to the Sea of Araba, that is the Dead Sea, was completely cut off, so the people crossed over. Step into it. Step into your reality. Step into uh, whatever God has placed you there for or with and how and when. Step into it knowing that God's gone before you. That God ordered these steps. That God places us in a certain place at a certain time around certain people. God does this. Step into that. As the Israelites did, the priests did in the sea, the Jordan River, the minute they stepped into it, it was, you know, it was, uh, there was a pathway. It was dry. They could walk through. Impractical? Yeah. Unlikely? Probably. Unbelievable? You bet it is. Dear friend, the circumstances may be hard, may may seem impossible. It, it, it might seem that you, you're pretty sure that it can't be done, whatever it is, that it won't happen. And we need to hear God's answer, God's question, really, ringing in our ear that he did, that he, what he said to Abraham about Sarah. You hear God's ringing in our ear. He's saying, is anything too hard for God? The answer is obvious. Let me press in on that. Nothing is too hard for God. Although we can't see it, although we don't understand it, although we don't know when or why and what way God's going to work this thing out, God is there working in his way, in his time, for his glory in your situation. And because of that, our God-focused reality is simply this, as 2 Corinthians 5, 7, is, 7 says. We live by faith, not by sight, or as some older versions say, we walk by faith, not by sight. That's living in a God-focused reality in your life, in your situation. That's your devotion for this week. If you have supported this channel financially. Thank you so much. If you'd like to support it, there's a link below. But God bless you and remember, it's a great day to serve the Lord.